Hey everybody, let's talk about architecting your game. Especially when you're just getting started, it can be hard to figure out how to get your game to do what you want just in the first place. As an example, you can tell by my lush art, I have a tile map here. I'd like to have the player be able to click on this river and have it pop up and say, yeah, you own that river and you've got 60 people there. And then I want them to be able to click on the volcano and it'll say, right, I'm attacking the volcano with your 60 people. How do I make the game do that? How do I wire it up? Well, I'm going to teach you how to use events. This is a very basic approach, an event-oriented approach. The idea is to keep the progression really, really easy to understand. If you keep the progression light and fluffy and easy, then when you need to change it later, it's not going to be a chore. You won't have a, like an, a 15 deep if statement trying to determine whether or not the next thing is happening. It's going to flow much easier, and that's going to be a huge advantage if you plan to do any sort of scripted events, um, you know, like cutscenes or tutorials. So the first step is we've got to make this button actually do something. We've got to take control of that, of that event. So we're using this built-in button script. There are other options, but I'll just show you with the button script. This built-in button script has an event right here, and we can simply click on this and tell it to tell the map something like map. There was a land that got clicked. And now when we click on that, it says some land was clicked. But none of the other buttons are set up. Because all of the other buttons have their own on click with its own setup. Now I could duplicate that first button and have them all point to the map like that. But there are a lot of problems with that. One of the problems is that in order to have that work, we would need to save the buttons with the map. We wouldn't be able to spawn in new buttons because they wouldn't know where to point. They weren't saved with the map. Another problem is that we would have a, a catch function on the map that would have to have this giant boilerplate like, oh, is it the player's turn or is it the enemy's turn? Um, is the player in combat mode or beach party mode? Uh, has the player clicked a map tile before? Which, which land have they clicked before? It's this giant thing that's got a ton of state to memorize and it's a real pain in the butt to edit later. How can we make it cleaner than that? Well, it's simple. We drive all of these events into a single laser tight point. One event that everybody can sign up for as they need it. And then we can just change who's signed up for it. How do I do that? First things first, we're going to need to take control of this event so that it's running our code. The first step is always to make sure that your code can get run. So here we're going to run land.select, which is just a function that says hi. Very basic, right? But the idea is that once this function is running, we'll be able to do whatever we want in there. We'll just delete the rest of these buttons and then recreate them. And they will keep up automatically instead of, instead of continually pointing back to the first button. It always points to itself. Hooray. So now when we hit play, we're going to get all of those people saying hi. See? Easy as pie. Now that we've got that properly set up, what we need to do is make sure that anybody else in our code that needs to listen can listen. We can use mono behaviors for this, or sorry, unity events for this. Here's uh, the namespace you'll need to use unity events, and you can say public unity event on click. You can see that it's popped up right here on the side, exactly like the button. In fact, it is exactly like the button. That's how it works. And then down here in select, we can say this.onclick.invoke, right? Now it's all wired up. If we add something to this button, uh, like say, oh, I don't want to drag the inspector. I want to drag the button. Like say we want to turn this button off. Now when I hit play and click, it turns itself off, but only that one, because the rest of them have their own events. We don't really want them to all have their own events, not, not at this stage. We would like them to all share a single event that everybody can look for later. How do we do that? Well, you might have noticed I said this dot on click. If you're an old hand, you may realize that you don't need to say this. Why did I put it there? I'll show you. There is a keyword we're going to be using called static. So once we define something as static, it belongs to the class, not the object. So there is no this.onClick. It doesn't exist anymore. This.onClick 
nothing. But land.onclick, there it is. See, nice, right? There is one flaw with this, and that is that Unity will not instantiate static variables for you, so you better instantiate it yourself. There you go. Uh, you'll get an error. It'll say that isn't instantiated. You'll say, oh, I've got to instantiate it. Not a big deal. Over here on map, we can then say, you know, I don't know what lands exist. I have no idea how many lands are ever going to exist. Lands might spawn tomorrow or in a quarter of a millisecond. They may have already spawned. So instead of worrying about that, I will just tell the class to tell me whenever anything happens. Boom. I don't have to know anything about which buttons exist. The buttons don't have to know anything about what map exists. When I hit play, click. Button selected, some land was clicked. Button 38 selected, some land was clicked. Some land was clicked is what we're, is what we're calling here. So we've created a chain. We could create a million more buttons and then click them and they will automatically be wired in nice and easy. See, we could delete a whole bunch of buttons and it won't change anything because the buttons will still be properly set up. And once the map has done its job, once the map understands that it has been clicked in the right way, it can say land dot on click dot remove listener land clicked and then sign someone else up land dot on click dot add listener. I don't know, update. It doesn't matter what it is. The point is, instead of having an if statement, we're simply directing the flow of code to a different function. See that? Now, the downside of using events like this is that it's very easy to lose track of who is signed up for the event when. Because of that, you're going to want to be very, very clear in your code who is listening when. And I'll give you some advice for that in a couple of minutes. First, though, we have a problem. Some land was clicked. We really want to know which land was clicked. How can we pass an argument with these functions? Well, I'll show you how to do it using Unity events, and then we'll talk about how to do it using C-sharp events at the end. So it turns out you can just specify arguments like this. We could even pass multiple arguments like whatever we want, right? We don't want to do that though, we just want the land. And this would work if you were running in Unity 2017, whatever they were called before the numbers happened, before the year numbers. But unfortunately, nowadays, they've been marked as abstract classes and you can't actually do that. Grr! So you do have to unabstract them. So we're creating a, la a class called land event, which inherits from unity event land, and it's empty, it does nothing. And then we just call these land events. Now it'll work. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty silly, but it is the case. And now that it takes an argument, we're going to pass it an argument like so. So now when we go back out here and let that recompile for a second, and then we hit play, boom, you can see that not only does the button know it was clicked, but the land knows which land was clicked. Easy enough, right? See? This one takes an argument. Now that we're passing an argument, that's the one getting called. Now, if you're curious, you can use these kinds of overridden Unity events uh, over in, in the editor. So we could have a public land event um, local click. The problem is that's not actually going to show up because Unity is still configured to not understand that these are serializable. So if you want to use them like that, you're going to have to say system.serializable. This is a little bit of an advanced aside in case you're wondering how this works, but there you go. If you don't care about that, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you how to use C-sharp events in a minute anyway, and those are probably better for this kind of thing. So now that we've set that up, what we can do over here on the map is we can unsign ourselves up from the event. So we can say land 
dot on click dot remove listener land clicked and then we can say land dot on click dot add listener target dot attack exciting right so we're passing the responsibility over to a completely different class we no longer care the map isn't listening anymore when the map gets told that uh, that something was clicked the map goes okay that's it I don't care anymore whatever just got clicked is now responsible for whatever else happens so when we click on button three here we select button three and now button three is listening for the next click there we are button three is now on the attack pow chow 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 pow chow but there is a problem with this how do we pass control back to the map? Presumably at some point we're going to be done attacking. We're going to want to go back to the map. And at the end of the day, all of these things are likely to be circuits. Like player turn starts, these things are listening. Player turn continues changing over to these things listening. Maybe the player turn starts over or maybe it continues onto the enemy turn. Like there's a flow chart, right? How do you control what's listening when? Well, one way is to create functions that do the exact opposite of whatever you're doing. Like, if you remove a listener, there's a function to add a listener. If you add a listener, there's a function to remove a listener. It's very, very hard to track these things down, like with debugging. So you want to be very careful to plan out what your course is. But I'm going to teach you an easy trick, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to use uh, a, a simple method to keep track of whether or not we should care about an event without unsigning up for the event. Public static list mono behavior um, command stack. There we are. What this is, is it's just a list of whatever we care about. They can be lands or menus or maps or buttons or whatever we want. And the idea here is that here in the map, what we're going to do is we're going to check and see whether or not we are on top of the stack. If land.command stack um, zero equals this, do these things. But here's the key. We don't want to do this part or this part. So basically we're saying that if we are on top of the command stack, then we are in command. And then here we can just say land.commandStack.add this. We don't want to actually add it. We want to insert it at zero. Come on. There we are. So when we start up, we put ourselves on top of the stack. And then down here we say, if we're still on top of the stack, we're clicked. But if we get clicked, we want to make sure that the target signs up for attacking. So we're going to create a new script called, a new function called ready attack. So in ready attack, ooh, too many, too many things there. In ready attack, what we're going to do is we're going to sign up for land.onclick attack. And we're also going to add ourselves to the command stack. Like so. And then here under attack, we're going to just remove ourselves. Like so. And then over here on the map, We'll just have an else so that we know what's happening. So what we've just done is we've created a system where there is a stack of objects that may be responsible for commands. So if we click button selected land got clicked button, and then if we click over here, it says button selected land got clicked button 28 button attacking button 28. That's interesting. Oh, that's because I forgot to, sorry, my bad. Um, this is supposed to be an insert. I was adding it to the back of the stack instead of the front of the stack, which is not what I wanted to do. Try that one more time. 
There are a lot of other ways to do this. You could use interfaces, for example. But this is a fairly easy way to do it. And the best thing about that is that it is really easy to debug because you can always just print out the command stack. You can be like, okay, so the map isn't in control. It is the um, it is this particular button. And you can see that the map isn't in command because the button is in command. And every time we click, it switches back and forth. So watch. Land got clicked button. Button attacking button one. Land got clicked button two. Button attacking C. So with this in mind, we can create a stack and then we can understand who is in charge when. We don't have to use events for this. We can uh, create the command stack out of interfaces or classes that share a parent, uh, you know, descending from the same parents. But this way allows us to put literally anything on the stack. For example, if we wanted to have a menu, an options menu, what we could do is we could add a new button. Do, 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 do. Where's the button? There they are, button. Uh, we could just have a new button that pops up wherever we need it, like over here in the corner. And then we could have this pop up another UI menu. And then the UI menu can just say, oh yeah, put myself in front of the, uh, uh, in, in front of the command stack. Uh, and then that menu would keep us from clicking through and clicking on the map below because the map understands that it's not in command right now. Something else is. It doesn't care what else is. It just knows that something else is. You don't have to worry about unsigning up for the event. You don't have to worry about re-signing up for the event. All you have to worry about is who's in command. And if you feel like it, what you can do is if you have multiple kinds of command, like say there's a player turn and an enemy turn, you can actually just switch them back and forth. So when one finishes, it just puts itself on the back of the stack and then the next one starts up and then it puts itself on the back of the stack and the first one starts up again. So you don't have to sit here and continually do these convoluted signing up and unsigning up for events, not if you don't want to. This is fundamentally the same as creating interfaces um, or doing similar kinds of things without events, but it has the advantage that uh, you don't have to know anything terribly complicated about how to handle interfaces or how to get them to show up in Unity. You just have to know this one thing, how to create static lists. Now, the reason that this can get quite hard if you use a different approach is that Unity events don't behave very well. Let me give you an example. You see how we've got land.onClick? Let's go ahead and ask Unity exactly how many people are listening. Get persistent event count. How many people are listening? Debug.log. listening should be two because this is happening inside of our land event on the attack so it should be the map and the land itself they should both be listening but how many people do you think are going to be listening zero yep because the only thing unity will tell you about are the ones that are permanently serialized i.e the ones that you create using the inspector if we take a look at the maps button here this this will show up because we created it in the inspector. But the ones we created in code will never appear. And there's no way to ask Unity what they are. There's no other like get non-persistent listeners or anything. It's just your SOL. What a shame. However, that is not necessarily true if we use C-sharp events. C-sharp events can't be shown in the inspector, but for controlling flow like this, they can be very powerful. So how do C-sharp events work? You can look these up online. They're fairly straightforward. There's hundreds of examples, but I'll go ahead and run you through it. So there are two pieces to C-sharp events in the same way that there are two pieces to Unity events. You see how we've got this here? Well, we've got the exact same setup down here in in uh, in our 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 um, in our C sharp version. It's called a delegate instead of a Unity event. We'll call it a clan event, and then we pass it in a land argument, like so. Now that we've got a clan event, that sounds pretty bad, actually. Let's go ahead and call it a sharp land event. 
Now that we've got a sharp land event, we can then just declare the same setup. So public static um, sharp land event. Um, um, on sharp click. We'll just call it on click. On sharp click, yeah, on sharp click. Because we're programming in C sharp, in case you're wondering. So I can't remember. I, I think that should work. Let's find out. Uh, da, 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 da. It should work, yep. So now what we've got is we've got this setup where we've got a C sharp event that does the same basic thing. And all we have to do down here is land out on click. Well, we can do the same thing with our sharp event. So on sharp click dot invoke this. See? And of course it can be land out on sharp click invoke. Same basic setup. And that's because the Unity event is on top of the C sharp event. So we have all of the same functionality that we would have with a Unity event. And just like this here does something you don't like and is kind of annoying to remember, well, the delegate is the same way. You're going to have to remember how to set up the delegate in the same way you're going to have to remember to set up this. The good news is you don't have to keep setting up either one. Once, once they're set up, you only need them in one spot. Uh, so that should all be fine. Now, how do you want to listen to the C sharp events? Well, it's the same basic idea, except for instead of doing it with this add listener mumbo jumbo, you just do a uh, math. Boom. No. Boom. And that should, wait, am I not, am I forgetting something? It should just be a plus equals. Oh, is this because I've got multiple variants? Yeah, yeah. It's not not quite as as flexible. Oh come on. Why is this still? Okay. This really isn't hard. I don't know why. There's something wrong with how this is working because it's really it really is this simple. Oh on sharp click. <laughs> there we are. The problem was I was using the wrong event. Brilliant of me. So in case you're wondering why none of that was working is I wrote on click instead of on sharp click. Uh, spelling errors are the number one problem when you're developing. So now that we've done that, we've just done that math, right? And then down here, we have the exact same setup as before. It's, it's exactly the same. Nothing is different at all. The only real difference is that over here on the land, we're going to want to sign up for our on sharp click instead of this. No, that's not how you spell attack. That's how you spell attack. And similarly, when we want to unsign up for it, I don't know whether we can just say minus equals. I think we can. I've never had any problem with it before, but it is online, underlined in yellow, so there might be a different approach that you'd prefer to take. So if we were to hit play, we should see that everything works exactly like it did before, because all we've done is swapped out whether we're using a Unity event or a C-sharp event. Now, the reason that you might want to use C-sharp events, uh, first off, they're a little bit faster. Second off, you can actually tell what's going on. Land.onsharpclick. Dot. Oh, look at this. There's an invocation list. Oh, how wonderful. So debug.log string. Oh, come on. Stop closing my brackets. Uh, and we can say dot count or dot length. Yeah. Listeners. So if you need to debug it, you can debug it. How wonderful is that? So we hit play. Two listeners exactly like they're supposed to be. Anyway, that's the basic idea of using events in this sort of setup. You can simply pass control over to whoever needs to have control. And whether you're using Unity events or C-sharp events, once you understand what's going on, it's fairly easy to keep tabs on things. The real threat with all of these event-based systems is that it's very hard to keep track of who is signed up for an event. So when you're thinking about this, your number one priority should be keeping control over 
exactly who has signed up when and knowing exactly who has signed up when. My preferred approach is to leave a lot of people signed up and then just use a command stack and have them just ignore whoever's not on top of the stack. But you can come up with your own favorite approach if that approach doesn't appeal to you. Anyway, that's the basic idea. Uh, I hope this was helpful, and if not, sorry for wasting your time.